Hey there Hunters, welcome back to the Gunners Guild. Today I want to talk about the cannons I've been crafting in Wild Hearts. I'm trying really hard to make cannon not feel super janky, so bear with me. I made a cannon tutorial going over the basics of the cannon, and I know I kind of missed a few points, forgive me, I'm still trying to figure everything out and what's optimal and whatnot. I'll update that when I get a good grasp on the game, like for realsies. In that same kind of realm, these cannons I've been using are probably by no means optimal, it's just what I've got cooking right now, and I just want to show you guys all and how the crafting kind of works. So the first cannon here is the Golden Tempest Cannon. I'm using this as an extreme heat build that is focused around generating as much heat as possible to be able to use the laser as much as possible. With the Fire Enchant Katakuri, you can effectively get a mortar ready in just 5 shots, far from the 18 it would normally take to shoot a cannon. The way we build this on the tree is rather convoluted as you can see. I started out by finding out what base I wanted to end up on, which is the Golden Tempest because it has an innate 30% high spirit, which is insane. High Spirit reduces the amount of heat you actually need to get red and flaming, which works really well with our speed heat skills, which also increase your heat generated, so you're kind of tackling it from both ends. Now from that base, I know I wanted all the speed heat nodes I could get, which was just two unfortunately. So I was backtracking over here to the Wolf's Cannon that has speed heat, which we needed to pass through. And then from here, one of the last boss's guns also has speed heat. But in order to go there, we kind of have to go around this frost husk tree because for whatever reason, that cannon only has four inheritable skills instead of five. So we couldn't take all the skills we wanted to go through there. So we end up coming back around down here and then going to the right and grabbing the other speed heat skill. Now for the last two skills, I wanted desperation personally because it's the biggest damage boosting skill available. And then conveniently, right above that is speed build, which reduces the animation speed for deploying and recovering key bases, which is kind of nice. So I grabbed those two and then just shot back up at the start. And that's kind of how I pathed it out. Obviously, you have to go from the top down when you're crafting, but always figure out where you want to end up first. This is a good showcase for how the skill inheritance system works and how you need to build the weapons on the tree. With this cannon, I generate heat super fast and I can use the laser extremely often. Granted, this is a better cannon suited for group play as you really don't have too much time to spam laser on your own and especially in the volatile hunts, which I came to realize. That being said, you can also use the heat to do jump attacks which scales off of height and if you're in the burning heat or not. I mentioned in my guide video that we don't really want to use the jump attack, but I also am trying to step away from the laser and this is the only other way we can dump our heat fast enough, so give it a try. Now there is also a second cannon I built for solo play and I wanted to have it be based on the volley skill, which is just increasing our rate of fire. So this one here has a 50% increased rate of fire, and man, this thing dacas. Now the reason for this is that in solo play against especially the post-game monsters, there's very little room for actually using your laser, especially when I generate so much dang heat with the tiger cannon. I was often just wasting it, or I'd be waiting around for an opening, or you know, shooting trying to get a part break off to make an opening, and I don't know, like it just didn't really work out, I just kept getting knocked out of it and stuff. So instead, I went with an increased fire rate cannon, so I can get some decent pew pewing while I was generating my heat and waiting for my laser openings. So again, when I'm forging this, I started at the end cannon I wanted to use, and this one is going to be the peacock cannon. There is another cannon that has a 30% volley innately as well, which is the dragon cannon, but it came also with speed heat, which I actually didn't want any more heat, so I opted out of that. Plus, this one has 5% more crit, so that's a little something else. Anyway, with this, I needed two other volley skills, and I had to run all the way back and around to get this cannon from the dragon, and then come back over here for desperation, because again, I like that, you don't have to. But then right here above desperation is the second volley, and so from there, I just settled with 5% more crit up at the top node here before finishing it back up. Again, you have to work on this backwards, but just this is a good way to see what you kind of have to go and do. Now you can use this for jump attacks as well to discharge the heat if you don't want to use the laser, but for solo play I actually prefer to use this for shooting, charge a laser when I can, and then just wait for whatever opening to occur when I want to use the laser, because you can just hold on to the laser as much as you want. And the normal shooting is so much better that I don't really feel pressured into using the laser all the time, so it's been a pretty good change of pace, I do like this cannon a lot. And I think the next time I want to work on a crit cannon, and then I'll kind of dive into elemental stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's basically all for me. Thank you all for watching. Thank you to my Patreon members. Appreciate you a ton. If anyone wants to talk shop about games or anything like that, feel free to join the Discord in the description below. And I'll see you guys uh, next time. So good luck out there, hunters.